You're listening to Clinical Conversations. I'm Joe Elia, joined this time by Dr. Carol Watson, Professor of Medicine Cardiology at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA and an Associate Editor of NEJM Journal Watch Cardiology. We're talking today with Dr. Kiari Kershaw about her letter last month in Jack, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, about age-specific racial disparities in mortality in the US. Dr. Kershaw is an Associate Professor of Preventive Medicine Epidemiology at Northwestern Feinberg School of Medicine. Welcome, Dr. Kershaw. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's really, really great to talk to you, Kiari, and I'm so excited to see the work that you're doing. It's so important. We've all taken this in Epidemiology 101, but do you mind just reminding all of us the difference between age-adjusted and age-specific mortality rates? Age-adjusted rates, we would um, weight the rate of mortality or other outcomes to the um, distribution of the population. And so that would be your age adjusted rates. rates. And then the age specific rates are for a specific age group. So there's no adjustment um, made there. So, Great, so, thank you. So, yeah, so an age, age adjusted rate is looking at a whole population, but age specific is looking at pieces of it, I guess. Right, and in the age adjusted, you're kind of weighting it differently by um, the size of the population at different age groups. And the proportions, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. And so, uh, using CDC data, you compared age adjusted and age and age specific mortality rates for the year 2018 between blacks and whites, stratified by sex. Can you briefly summarize those findings? So, what we found when we looked at age adjusted mortality rate ratios. Uh, we found actually that the black-white difference when we used the age-adjusted mortality rate ratios were smaller than the black-white mortality rate ratios when we looked at age-specific um, differences. And particularly, we found um, about two times higher um, mortality rate ratios when we looked at um, compared infants and um, young adults and even midlife adults uh, whereas when we looked at the age adjusted mortality rates, the uh, ratios were a little over one. So we saw this big difference when we looked at these age specific ratios than when we looked at the age adjusted ones. Okay. So what do you think that difference means? What are the implications of that, Kiari? Well, I mean, I think what it means is that some of these uh, disparities that we see that are persistent and even large disparities might be even worse than we think, and particularly at critical um, periods in life, in midlife and young adulthood. And um, so just looking at the age adjusted masks some of these important times when we might need to intervene or really have these largest disparities. Yeah, like the infant mortality disparities are striking. Yes, yeah. Now, as I was looking at your table, there's a point there where the relative risks uh, of black men and women are both lower than among whites, despite being higher at all other age intervals. So what are the implications of that difference? What, 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 do you, what might be causing that? Yeah, so there are a couple of theories on that. And, and one is this, that there's a mortality crossover that happens at that point. And so um, there's some selective survival of black individuals who are, who are able to kind of, I guess, to survive a lot of the um, uh, structural and individual level factors that create this mortality sweep that we see throughout mid up into midlife. And so that the black adults who remain at that point are selected for population. And so where for white individuals, age becomes this big predictor of, of survival for black individuals, the people who are left are who are who survived that point are a little more robust and potentially um another way to think about it is if you kill off all of the vulnerable individuals those who are left look pretty hardy yeah yeah exactly given all of these findings put together what do you think the major takeaway people should take from this i think that it's important to 
look at the, to take a deeper look, I think when we're thinking about looking at our um, data, um, particularly when we're a lot of, I mean, I'm, I'm an epidemiologist and definitely age adjust in general. And there are some good things about that in terms of generalizability, but what for disparities work, I think it's important to also look at um, the way these um, disparities are playing out over the life course. And I think it can give us insight into these um, periods in life, which are most critical for intervention. Yeah, it really may help us think about the time periods we have to give extra resources to. And it also maybe should help us think about examining those robust, sturdy individuals and maybe look at some of their predictors as well. Yes, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And what is it about people who are able to survive and overcome these certain obstacles that happen over the life course? I wanna thank you, Dr. Kershaw, for talking with us today. And uh, good luck with the continuing work. And congratulations on this very important study. Thank you. That was the 279th Clinical Conversation. We come to you from the NEJM Group, and Kristen Kelly is our executive producer. All our podcasts may be found at podcasts.jwatch.org. Thanks for listening.